I was very lonely. It affected me it deeply. It affected me really. I mean, I was stressed all the time. I stayed in my bedroom all the time. I didn't want to come out. And I wanted somebody to be with me. If you were to find out that this person is real, I would be ecstatic to three five hundred dollar gift cards. I got more. I got tons more. I got more. But I wanted to believe that they were the person. But paying for a relationship, it just doesn't make sense. I don't want to, but I don't want to be by myself. What's up, Seekers? Welcome back to another episode of Scamfish presented by SocialCatfish.com. On today's episode, we speak to a 61-year-old woman named Catherine who met several men on several different dating sites. Every single one of these men have asked her for money. Catherine has dished out tens of thousands of dollars trying to get one of these men home. Let's jump into it. Real quick, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Your comment and like could help stop someone from being scammed. Let's get into it. Okay, hi uh, everybody. My name is Catherine. I like to watch movies. I like going to the beach. I like holding hands with my loved one. I like cuddling. That's not a hobby, but I do like doing that. <laughs> Catherine has been through a lot in life. A couple of years ago, she was diagnosed with mouth cancer. In the past, I've been married three times. My uh, first husband, he was a cheater. <laughs> Plain and simple, he was a cheater. Catherine's first husband was also in and out of jail, which led her to divorce him. Her second marriage lasted seven years and ended after her husband told her he was headed to the store and never came back. A few years later, she got married to her third husband, but that also didn't end well. He had an online affair. I would hear him on the phone with this, with this, uh, with this girl. That's how I found out about it. And he didn't lie. He said he was. Anyways, I forgive them, and I said, all I want is for you to stop doing this, and he wouldn't stop. So he left. I kind of think that's another reason why I got back. It was to pay him back and get on and have me an online affair. After being let down by her husband cheating with another woman online, Catherine also decided to date online. She opened several dating accounts on Bumble, POF, and Facebook dating. I was very lonely. It affected me it deeply. It affected me really. I mean, I was stressed all the time. I stayed in my bedroom all the time. I didn't want to come out. And I wanted somebody to be with me. I got on Facebook and he had asked for a friend request and I accepted him. The first gentleman that I had talked to, his name was Donnell Brody. I met him. He said he was uh, on a ship. Very handsome. He's a good looking guy. He was about 36 years old. And that, I, I've been through a bunch of them. This is when it all started. Donnell was one of many men Catherine dated online. After being cheated out of her past marriages, this was the first time in a long time Catherine felt wanted. This is another gentleman that I talked to and I was crazy about him. Hans Bieter, he was a German man, 68, very handsome guy. Uh, he's an um, engineer. When I was talking to him, he was working in Malaysia. He uh, messaged me on Facebook and said that we were going to have a good life together. He said he loved me right away. Right away. Within the first week we were talking about he, him being uh, having a family with me. My already made, he knew I couldn't have any more children. So my family were going to be his family. I was so happy. I was so happy. This man, he just fooled me up. But he wanted some, he needed some money to buy a gift card. He kept on asking and I had nothing to give him no more. I owe on three loans because of Hans. 
I would get loans and I would send him the money. He always had an excuse why he had to have, uh, why he needed the money for this or that. He didn't get paid on his contract till after the job was completed. And uh, I sent uh, Hans of Toba probably ten or fifteen thousand dollars in the amount of six months. Hines needed money for hotels, food, Wi-Fi, and plane tickets. His stories never ended. Catherine was fed up with Hines and felt like she would never see him. That's when a man by the name of Morgan David contacted her. The new man that I met, he said he was a doctor, an orthopedic doctor. He had a good personality. He was a very good personality. He was so sweet, very polite. Initially, we were just friends. That's when it started off. And then he popped the question that, that he loved me. And he wanted to spend his life with me. And I believed him. He was very sweet, well, very mannered. He didn't curse. And I like that. Didn't come across as a cheater. He said you know, <laughs> that he wasn't wasn't a cheater. We were going to work on, get a house together. Yes, we were going to get married. Yep. And I was going to raise his son. Up until this point, Catherine was funding two men's lives. All she wanted was for one of them to come home and marry her. I would be talking to one and then I'd be talking to the other. I would switch over talking to both of them. And I was thinking to myself, whichever one comes first, that's the one I'm going to go with. They're supposed to be wealthy. They, they both tell me that they have money. Well, you know, of course, the doctor does. I love, I love both of them. But I, Morgan is the one that I see myself w wanting to be with. He still says he's going to be, he's coming to be with me. I talked to, uh, to Morgan today. I said, all I want you to do is be honest with me. And he said, I'm being honest with you. I am who I say I am. I said, okay, then I believe you. After sending $10,000 and three loans to Heinz, she completely gave up on him. Meanwhile, Morgan was promising to come home, but he also needed money. I um, sent them two, three, five hundred dollar gift cards. I got more. I got tons more. I got more. I got more. I have more somewhere in my in my bedroom. This is a five hundred dollar one. I have more. I have more of these somewhere in my room. I've got uh, Google cards. I have more of those in my room. I have been to these stores uh, approximately, I would say, about a hundred times. And I went to Walmart. I've been to Walgreens. I've been to the dollar store. I've been to Dollar General. I allowed him to get in my account. He made me lose my account from Chase. Gave him the information. Here's the, uh, the paperwork. After sending David Morgan $5,000, he's still claiming he's coming home to Catherine. He says he just needs a little more money. Catherine has just been waiting to meet one of these men in person. He says he's still coming. And I, and I believe him. I don't understand why I keep on calling these men. I don't understand why I I'm still want to believe that Hans is Hans. And Morgan is Morgan. I don't know. I really couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you right now. I want to believe that they are, and I believe that they are, because I don't want to be alone. I love both of them. I want. I want to believe that they are real. If you were to find out that this person is real, I would be ecstatic. I want to find out if they're real and I want to find out if they're a scammer too. Things started to spiral out of control when Morgan and Hines found out about each other. Morgan accused Hines of scamming Catherine out of $10,000 and the three loans she sent him. There's a lot of red flags here, Seekers. 
We stuck to our tools, and after some digging, we felt that we had all the information we needed to prove that all these guys were fake. Real quick, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Your comment and like could help stop someone from being scammed. Let's get into it. It was now time to sit down with Catherine and let her know what we had found. Hey, Catherine. It's great to see you today. How you doing? Good. How are you? I'm okay. Hi, Catherine. I have a few questions for you before we start. How many men are you in contact with right now? One, two... Three. That's it. Three. Three. Okay. And how many of those men are you sending money to currently? Just one. Okay. I went through your whole Facebook. You have a ton of men contact contacting you. When is the last time you sent money? Uh, <laughs> um, last week. Oh my gosh. Okay. I know. I promise. I promise I wouldn't do it. And I. So, Catherine, what was the reason why you had sent money? The reason why is because he needed it for the bus ticket to come over here. So, what happened? He gave it to his uh, son. Well, he, that's what he said. We care about you. It's frustrating when. You know, we tell someone not to send money and, and you still sent money. We get submissions to our share my story at socialcatfish.com email every day. We tell everyone that's not sure about their online boyfriend or girlfriend to not send money until we've looked into everything first. We tell them this to protect them from the scam. So Morgan David sent you a, a photocopy of his ID. We looked into that by running a reverse image search on the identification, a normal tactic scammers use, they, they send documents and identifications and also passports. So it's very common for us to get results on an ID or a passport through a reverse image search. So we got a hit on the ID that he sent to you and we found the exact same template of where he stole that, that ID from. What scammers tend to do is they'll take photos and then they'll take templates off the internet and they'll combine the two using Photoshop. Um, that's unfortunately the case in this scenario. Captain Scammer loved Photoshop. These guys are able to get away with these Photoshops like this note and these oil rig photos because they are targeting vulnerable people. Catherine knew these weren't real. She just wanted to believe these guys that bad. So he sure admits that he says that he is is uh, that person. So we researched multiple profiles and searched for the true identity of the person in the images. And what we had found was that none of the men you are talking to are the real people in these profiles. So starting with Hans, his real identity is a man by the name of Francisco. Moving on to Morgan David's son. He is actually the son of a Utah mayor who is now deceased from serving in Afghanistan. His dad is not Morgan David. And then moving on to Morgan David, we did run some reverse image searches through our, our site socialcabbage.com and what we had found was the true identity of this person is Stephen Nisi. Unfortunately, we have found that Stephen Nisi's images are a huge target among scammers. He said that's not true, that he is that person. And what do you believe? Well, it, I mean, it's obvious. I mean, everything that I've seen so far has not been true on, online. I don't believe none of the, the dating sites, nobody, or, I, I, I don't believe none of them are telling the truth. Why did you just send money then, Catherine? I didn't send money to him. I did to Michael. So we actually found the true identity of Michael Reed. And he is a man by the name of Oscar. Okay. Is, is he in Mexico? So we sent you a link and you sent it to him. We got a couple clicks because you sent it. We sent it to multiple men. 
it's very possible for these three people to be all one person. Um, whoever is behind these profiles is in Ghana. Where is Ghana? Ghana is in Africa. Okay. Ghana is located in West Africa. Much like Lagos, it's home to many scammers that use this romance tactic to dupe people out of money. Our team was able to find that all of these men that Catherine had been speaking to were located in Ghana. But I wanted to believe that they were the person. But paying for a relationship, it just doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't. You're right. I'm not doing it again. And that's why we want to help you out, Catherine. We want to provide you with a free subscription on socialcatfish.com where you can run searches. If you want to talk to people and get to know them, run some images, run some searches, verify these people before you get to that point where you're sending people money. So where do you go from here, Catherine? Like where, where, what is the next step for you? Are you going to continue to talk to these people? I don't want to, but I don't want to be by myself. Catherine, it seems like you have a daughter that's living with you, and it seems like she loves you very much. I know that. I know she does. So it doesn't seem like you're quite alone. What about counseling, Catherine? I would not know I need counseling. No. I do know that. And then I... And I do, I'm not going to say I'm not going to do it again, but, but I'm not going to give no money. That when they start mentioning money, that's it. I know they're not real. All three of them. Why couldn't at least one of them be it? So what I want to do is I want to go through your Facebook and try to secure your Facebook a little bit more. Like I said, Catherine, we care about you. But you have to stop sending money to people online. I'm not sending no more money. That's it. It's done. I'm finished with sending money. I know. Wow. I spent some time going through Catherine's Facebook. She had a bunch of potential scammers. We kept seeing these messages being sent out to her friends and family about Exxon Mobil. But the problem was she wasn't sending them. Here's a few ways you can stay safe on Facebook. First, Secure your Facebook. You can find this by typing hacked in the search bar. Select secure your account on Facebook. From here, you can report what kind of suspicious activity you're seeing on your account. We selected, I found a post or message that I didn't create. Facebook will then start the process of securing your profile. After some moments, Facebook will then ask you to change your profile password. This will get rid of any scammers that might have access to Catherine's Facebook. Lastly, we deleted anyone as a friend that Catherine had that she didn't know. There was a lot. Catherine ran her credit and shockingly, we found two unknown bank accounts opened in her name. Luckily, she was able to close them. We advised her to freeze her account and file a police report. She's also working on changing her social security number. We spoke with Catherine one last time, and this is what she had to say. I blocked Morgan, and I docked, doc, I mean, I blocked um, Michael Reed. I did do that. I did, I did give him peace of my mind. I felt good about it, too. I am going to seek some help over there, because I do have an addiction. You know? I definitely do. I don't know what it is. Why? I know what, I don't know. What, what makes, it's like I get a high off of it. Uh, I have a, an appointment with, uh, with my doctor coming up and that's when I'm going to talk to them and I'm going to make sure that I open up but that's what i'm focusing on is getting myself right and stop getting online this is my granddaughter hello one of the things that i can do is hang out with my family more go to more outings with them i need to go to church that would be a good one 
I appreciate that everything that y'all done, and I'm, and I'm going to take your suggestions. What y'all that y'all think that I need to do about this, and um, this has been an experience that I don't want to go through ever again. Thanks for watching another episode of Scamfish, everyone. Remember, new videos go out every Wednesday. If you or anyone else you know might be going through a scam, please send an email to sharemystory at socialcatfish.com. See you guys next week.